lovely I am Ben from Team Panic, and today we are building not one, but two whole robots. Uh, so we're actually building two robots for loan bots for the ARC, which is the uh, group that I fight with every single month. And I have built loan bots for them in the past. This here is our Ducket. It's one of the previous loan bots that I built for them. It's been kind of fighting on and off. Uh, its most effective use was at Maker Faire in 2016, and it ran for all, basically an entire day as a loaner robot there. But uh, the design has been interesting, and uh, it's a lot of fun to drive, but it's pretty ineffective as a robot. So I wanted to pull this thing apart and build two loan bots out of it. So. Uh, there, like I said, there's going to be two of them. One of them we're going to do here right now on this channel, and one of them we're going to do on the ARC channel. So uh, after you've done watching this video, go over to there and you'll find a whole new video by me uh, turning this guy, you know, or taking some of the stuff out of him and turning it into a brand new combat robot. Uh, also, if you're interested in all of this robot combat stuff, ARC is a great place to subscribe to because there are videos going up every month after our fights uh, that give you a rundown of the robot combat action for that month. So if this is something you're interested in, that's a, gr uh, a great place to go because there is always robot fighting stuff going up over there. So what are we going to do today? Well, today we are going to take this thwack bot idea and we are going to power the head. So rather than having the thwack bot where the wheel is flicking over, hits the head into the table. We're actually going to mount a servo in the middle, change the design a little bit, mount the servo in the middle, and have the head be powered. So when you pull a trigger on the controller, it throws the head down and the head hits the table. Uh, at least that is the current plan. Uh, most of this robot is actually going to disappear. In fact, all of it is going to be reprinted. Uh, over on the ARC channel, I'm going to build something almost as ridiculous as this and probably going to be just as much fun to drive so make sure i go and check that one out i'm also going to be stealing the electronics from inside this to build that other robot so we're going to do a whole brand new set of electronics as well in this video because there's a few little tweaks that i want to make to the servo motor so that the hammer head which is actually a head in this case has a little bit more power than your regular el cheapo servo can actually put out uh, yeah, I think with all of that said, it's time to get some printing done and uh, yeah, maybe some spray painting because this yellow transparent stuff isn't the strongest plastic, so I think we'll print in a regular white plastic and spray paint to get a bit of a, uh, a more golden look for this new duck. Okay, so that is most of the parts now done. Unfortunately, the gold spray paint that is sitting right here and actually still has stuff in it, apparently, uh, failed when I tried to spray it out. I, there might be a gem in the nozzle or something. I tried to clean it out. Nothing seemed to be working. So I had to go back to uh, hand painting these things, which um, has turned out a little interesting. There you go. This is the, the duck weapon head uh, for this robot. And yeah, I mean, it's turned out okay. Um, definitely could be better, and next time we will either spray paint or actually print the whole thing just in yellow plastic. But I didn't have any yellow plastic, and I don't have time uh, to wait for the yellow plastic to come in. So, paint. Paint it is. Uh, now, the next thing we're going to do is the electronics for this guy. And as I said before, we're going to have the head on a servo so it actually actuates and smacks into things. And to do that, I'm just going to use one of these tiny little cheap uh, plastic geared servos that you can pick up and pretty much anywhere that will sell direct from China. Now, these things are okay, but they don't have a lot of power in them. And the reason they don't have a lot of power in them is the components. So if you take one of these things apart and get rid of all the plastic gears and get rid of the plastic casing and everything, you end up with this. Well, almost this. The One of the motors is motor wires is broken but what this is this is a tiny tiny little motor this guy here 
and a potentiometer and then a very, very small little control board. Now this control board is the thing that reads the position of the potentiometer and outputs the correct signal to the motor to get the servo motor to spin one way or the other. Now, these tiny, tiny little boards have very, very little power in them. Uh, most servo motor boards are rated for five volts and when you're looking at one of these tiny boards that has come in a really cheap servo, if you put anything more than five volts into this board, this board starts uh, overheating and when it overheats, the potentiometer reads values differently and the servo will actually swing around all over the place when you're giving it just a straight signal that says stay in one spot. It's just because the board overheats and it really doesn't like that at all. Uh, so that means that this motor is capped out at running on five volts. And that means it's capped out at the speed that it can run. So what we're gonna do instead is we're going to cut these red wires in a brand new servo. And instead we're going to add our own H-bridge in here so we get this motor moving at 7.2 or whatever the full voltage rail of a fully charged LiPo is, which means we're going to jump the voltage up and therefore jump the speed up, which hopefully means the hammerhead will move a little bit faster. I'm still not expecting this to do huge amounts of damage and realistically this is just a bit of an experiment just to see if I can in terms of uh, increasing the speed on a really cheap servo like this. But once we've done that this will all mount up in here nicely and we'll be good to go. We can then attach the hammerhead in there, attach some uh, wheels and everything else and then bolt it all together and it will be ready for a, a test run. So let's get to the electronics. And we are done. This thing is absolutely hilarious. Uh, when I first did that little bit of testing and the head was starting to jiggle around, I realized it absolutely needed the googly eyes and they have made all the difference. This thing is just quackers. And I think that's what we're going to call this guy. This is going to be absolutely quackers. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much ready to go actually as a lone bot. It's 130 grams. So it does make weight. Uh, there is a few kind of wiring issues that need to fix up inside because at the moment, if you pull forwards on the stick, the robot turns, which is not great, but that's literally just one of the motoring wires needs to be fl uh, flipped over. And then uh, that's done. So yeah, there we go. One brand new loan bot. We've gone from our oh, duck it to uh, absolutely quackers. And I, I think it was a very necessary change, this thing looks hilarious. At some point in the near future, I do hope to get some actual yellow PLA and we'll reprint the chassis out, chassis out of actual yellow PLA and that will make it look a little bit better and just kind of tie the whole thing together a little bit more. But yeah, there you go. One brand new line bot. I hope you guys have enjoyed that one. Uh, and if you have, please do jump over to ARC and check out 
the other build that I'm doing over there, just as a little kind of sneak peek at that. We've got a uh, very interesting looking robot coming together over there. So you can uh, go ahead and check that one out. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.